And we are live. Welcome into Betting on the Bayou. This is week number six of the college football season. I am Patrick Fry, joined as always by Ryan, the reseller. And Ryan, I got to tell you, Ryan, I uh, don't want to toot my own horn too much here, but toot I it. am on somewhat of a roll. Not a, I'm not a, you know, I could be hotter than I am right now, but uh, I have not had a losing record since week two of the college football season where I think I went one and four that day. And uh, the last three weeks, I've made 11 bets, and my record in those 11 bets is eight and three. So I am uh, really doing pretty well. I'm up, and I'm up uh, a, a decent amount of units in the last three weeks as well. Quickly, I'm going to go over uh, this past week's card, which was I had three plays. I did Oklahoma minus five and a half. That was trash. I had Kentucky plus seven. They were able to come through for me. And then I decided to take a little bit of a shot. Wake Forest money line plus 205. Wake Forest was able to get the victory over Florida State this weekend. So that was a, a nice little come up on the uh, the Wake Forest money line. So uh, that was a two and one week. I was four and one two weeks ago, and then I was two and one uh, three weeks ago. And then that week two, I was one and four. And then in week number one, I was four and three. So actually four of the five weeks, I've um, had a had a over 500 record, I guess you can say. Although I think in weeks one and three, uh, I was still down some units. So, but of the last two weeks, I'm up units. I think I'm up in the last two weeks, 4.7 units in the last two weeks. So I'm I'm really starting to hopefully get even hotter than I am right now because it was after those first two weeks, it was a rough start to the year. That it, and then if you include week zero, I was what was I week zero? I cannot remember. I might have been like one and three. On week yeah, but, zero, or yeah, but every like game on week zero was straight dumpster juice. Hey, we yeah, don't count that. Well, I, I mean, hey, look, my bankroll counts it, so <laughs> I gotta, I gotta count it. But nonetheless, um, it as expected, I guess. And me personally, I was expecting to get better as the season went on. That's kind of is what happening. Obviously, I don't expect to, you know, have this success every week. But if I can have this success more weeks than, than none, then I'll uh, I'll go ahead and take that. So that's a little bit of a, a review as to where we started, where we're at now, and how we're starting to kind of really get this this thing going. And uh, I'm hoping to continue with this weekend. I'm actually going to be hanging out at a, a sports book on Saturday. So I am looking forward to hanging out at a sports book for a college football Saturday. And um, I still don't I don't have any picks as of today. It's still early on in the week. That's another thing I've learned over the last few weeks. I don't want to make my picks too early. I want to kind of let the week play out, see how some of these lines move, see, you know, how these teams like what's the word on these teams, the injuries, because obviously we're getting into the part of the year now where injuries could be a factor and some people may be out, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm definitely like this past week. I think I made all my picks on Friday. So obviously go uh, follow BOTB Media on Twitter to follow my picks because if you followed my picks the last three weeks, um, you you would have won some money. So uh, yeah. hopefully hopefully I don't jinx myself and tell you to go follow me now and tell my picks for the next uh, however many weeks there are left of college football season and then you ultimately lose money. But uh, obviously we are here to, to win and we want to win them all. We want to win every bet, but... It's not. It's easier said than done. So, uh, I got. I'm look. I'm looking forward to the card this week. A um, lot of uh, interesting matchups this week as well. This might be one of the better Saturdays of the the season as far as matchups and and uh, and whatnot. So, I'm ready to get into it. The betting on the Bayou Show is for entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be a professional betting advice. If you lose your ass at a sports book. Betting on the Bayou cannot be held responsible. Gambling problem? Call 1-877-770-STOP. And before we get into it, Patrick, I told you earlier this week, I had a hilarious story I wanted to tell you. Yes. All right. So at some point during the early week, I contracted the stomach virus from the sun. 
mm-hmm. and it didn't rear its ugly head until Thursday early morn. And obviously, you know, it comes with the stomach bugs. So we won't go into that. But so Thursday got worse Friday, Saturday. I'm to the point now where I can watch TV and not get like a major headache, but I'm still extremely dehydrated. Mm-hmm. Still not feeling good at all. Uh, but I want to watch some college football, right? I mean, my life has been pure hell for the last three days. I, I want to watch some college football. So I'm watching college football and I doze off. And at some point I must've been hallucinating because if you've been following this show, you know, I have not done any sports betting yet. I think I might want to in the future, but I'm just scared to pull the trigger. I wake up from my nap and I'm still like half nappy, half watching. And I see something about Kansas winning. And it, the last sh- show I was talking about how you need to start betting on Kansas every single time now, cause they mm-hmm. screwed you in the past. I told my wife who was sitting right next to me in her chair, I go, Mandy, call Patrick, tell him I just won big money on Kansas. <laughs> and she was like, what? She was like, I betted money on Kansas and I told Patrick he should bet on Kansas. Call him. <laughs> She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you sports betting? And I was <laughs> like, and then that kind of like woke me out of it. And I was like, huh, what are you talking about? So <laughs> I must've been hallucinating. Uh, apparently you were. Cause I know, I mean, I, I because I know if you're actually going to put some money down, you're, you're, uh, I, I would like to think I'll be one of the first people that you tell <laughs> that, Hey, I'm, I'm deciding I'm going to put some money down. Obviously this show, you'll, you'll let us know here if you put some money down. So yeah. I'm still waiting on that, that day here. Hopefully one episode before the end of the season, uh, we'll have a play from, uh, Ryan, the reseller, the Ryan reseller lock of the week. Maybe, uh, if we could sponsor that at some point, but yeah. Um, yeah. You know, betting on Kansas, it, it would have, it, I mean, obviously up until this point, if you bet on Kansas every week against the spread and the money line for for all that matter, you you would be up a lot. And I bet against Kansas. It wasn't even in a, like a single. It was a part of a parlay, and it was the only leg that missed back in I think week three. I think it was. It was the week that they played West Virginia. I thought for sure West Virginia was going to beat them by more than two touchdowns, but boy was I wrong. <laughs> uh, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, we're sitting here. And Kansas, for the first time ever, is hosting College Game Day in Lawrence, Kansas this weekend. It's a battle of unbeatens. It's TCU at Kansas. I've actually won some money off of TCU earlier this year, but then I lost money on TCU last week, obviously betting on Oklahoma. Oklahoma and TCU, two teams I've won money on already this year. I had to go with Oklahoma, and that was obviously a a terrible mistake. So... That's going to be an interesting game. I'll, we'll go over that here in a little bit, the, the betting lines for that one. But I got, of course, uh, Southland Conference lines, FCS lines, and FBS lines all ready to go. i tell you what. I would never choose to go to a college in Tornado Alley. Oh, oh, you want to recruit me to a place where there's F5 tornadoes all the time? No, no, thank you. Stay away well, from that. Well, you know, tornadoes... Or probably a, a, they're a little they're a little less common this time of the year. So, I mean, obviously you still got to worry about them. I think the height of tornado season is like April to June. Like that's when you really would have to worry about them. Yeah, but, but you're still living on campus then, taking classes. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, like, yeah, I mean, you still got to be aware of them. But obviously, you're not playing in them. I guess we got to worry about them when you're playing. I mean, it's very. I just don't want to live there in general. It, yeah, I guess. And I mean, obviously, a lot of these kids, they probably only go live there for four years and they, then they go back to wherever they came from. I mean, some some are from, you know, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, whatever the case may be up there in Tornado Alley. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that I mean, of course, we got to worry about hurricanes down here. So it's like wherever you go, you got to worry about something. Yeah, but you can run away from been- hurricanes. I would rather go to a place where, like, I know a hurricane's coming or I know, I mean, of course, hurricanes are probably your biggest foreign advance notice. Like, okay, this thing, like, you know, we know days out if, if you know, to be prepared. Like a tornado is something that just kind of comes and goes. Yeah. It, 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 may kinda, it may kind of sneak up on you. 
And then like earthquakes, you you don't know that's going to happen until it happens. So I definitely don't want to go anywhere where earthquakes are a, a, a common thing. So tornadoes would probably be second, though, because obviously a tornado could just kind of sneak up on you. Um, and then it'll cause destruction for 5, 10, 15 minutes, however long, and then go away. Now, a hurricane, like I said, you know more in advance if it's heading your way. But the bad thing about a hurricane is that, if you know, like the one that just hit Florida, um, that's like having a tornado. That's basically like having just a large tornado, but it's a, a prolonged tornado. So with, you know, with storm surge. So it's like, eh, what do you do? You know, it's kind of, you know, you got you got one devil with the tornado and then another devil with uh, with a hurricane. So um, everywhere you go, you got you got something to worry about. There's a big ass fault line that runs through St. Louis in Jonesboro, Arkansas. I used to live in Jonesboro and they had some tornadoes and I was like, we're out of here. Uh, but apparently that, that fault lines due any second. <laughs> like they've been saying that for years that it's due any time now. For and an earthquake. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently it's a pretty badass fault line. And whenever they, whenever it does crack off, like they're thinking it's going to lay St. Louis to waste. Well, uh, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll find out when it happens. That's the bad thing about earthquakes. You don't know when they're going to happen. Better course, go visit earthquakes the arch. Ha- technically, earthquakes happen every day, so. Uh, better go a visit. Of, bunch of small ones. Better go visit the arch while you can. Yeah, it may not be there if a, yeah. if a earthquake levels it. Mm-mm. All right, so McNeese has an off day, uh, a bye week, which is good. And I saw a lot of comments. I didn't, I wasn't able to watch the McNeese game, uh, but I saw a lot of comments on the ranch group saying that, Hey, going into the fourth quarter, it was 28 to 20. And then they just kind of ran away with it after that. So the pokes were pretty competitive going into the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, you know, and the funny thing about the game was we did the show last week. I think we did it. Do we do it on Wednesday last week? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, when we did it, the line for that game was at 16 and a half. And I, I said, you know, I would lean Incarnate Word. I think Incarnate Word's going to take it out on McNeese. And ultimately, I, I think I looked back on Saturday morning to, I looked at the line and it moved all the way up to like, I think it was like 22 Dang. or something like that. So, like, that's a huge movement. So, that shit tells you, like, there must have been just an absolute ton of money, which ultimately, and Corner Word did cover like 22. So they won 48 uh, 20. A couple of late touchdowns by Corner Word, which, um, you know, the McNeese play by play gentleman uh, was not too happy with one of the late <laughs> touchdowns. Um, that, because it was like less than a minute left, they're up 21 and they're passing the ball and they score. So they're, they're pulling some Steve Spurrier stuff on us. I guess. I mean, apparently there's some, uh, there, there might be some sort of animosity between uh, McNeese and Incarnate Word, and even more so, I guess, now. I don't know other than, than that, but I don't know if, you know, what, what's going on there. But well, nonetheless. Tom's not ready to hop down and go take care of some biz? Uh, he, he, he used the term classless. Um, so uh, the, the term classless was used yes. for sure. Um, he he wasn't a fan of them scoring that late touchdown win. They could have easily just ran the clock out. They could have taken a knee, and uh, they decided to uh, score another touchdown late. And I don't know, maybe the incarnate word coach had money on the at the twenty two point line and oh, wanted to, to cover that. all we know. Well, uh, I don't know. He's probably <laughs> I mean, just try- probably just trying to uh, you know get a better ranking after Southeastern surprised him. Yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, Ron Hayes was, I guess, trying to, uh, you know, calm <laughs> calm down a little bit. And um, he was like, well, they might be just trying to get some style points. Tom's like, I don't care about style points. I care about class. <laughs> and, um, so, yeah, that, that, that that's that. But uh, McNeese got an off week. And they played, like you said, they played very well. Um, for a second, I was like, dang, McNeese might cover. But unfortunately, like I said, a couple of late touchdowns. And in corner where it was able to cover, but look, I, I think a lot of, and I don't know if Coach Goff was like 
being conservative with his play calling the first four games and then just really opened up the playbook on Saturday night against Incarnate Word. But man, I mean, they, you know, they, they hung in there with the, with the Cardinals for a little while uh, when I honestly was not expecting them to. So I think a lot of fans were optimistic or they are optimistic about um, their performance against Incarnate Word. They got the off week, uh, two weeks to prepare. They got Texas A&M Commerce next weekend at home in Lake Charles. And I'm just looking forward to seeing, you know, because obviously I think you can take that as a some you can, you can spin that into a positive. Like, hey, we played with, you know, the number they're right now. I think they're number eleven. Uh, they're number ten now. They were number eleven. They moved up one slot. You know, we kind of hung in there with three for three quarters with the number ten team in the country. Like, let's see if we can build off of it. So, looking forward to to next week. Texas A&M Commerce coming in to uh, take on the Cowboys and see if they can uh, pick pick up where they left off against us, against Incarnate Word. Yeah, I think you had to play a conservative coming in the first few weeks of the year because, what, 58 new players on the team? and Yeah, you got um, not a lot of new players, new system. So, yeah. yeah but I feel like, you obviously, as the games go on, you could pick it up more and more each game, but I feel like... Which is, I think was, that's what we're seeing now. Yeah. So hopefully, now getting into the meat of the Southland, we're going to be hitting on all cylinders, and we can kind of pull this out so I don't have to. But it, is it too far gone for our bet yet? Um, I mean, they're one and four. Let me look. The over-under was at six and a half. So they're, they're playing 11 games? Yeah. So I'm, I'm seven and four. This. We run the table. I'm pull, yeah, I'm pulling up the schedule real quick. I think it's 11 games. Yeah, it is eleven games. I'm pulling. I'm just pulling it up real quick, just to just to double check and confirm. I mean, technically, yeah, they're one and four. Yeah, they could still finish seven and four. So, but if they lose one more game, like if they lose to Texas A&M Commerce, then I, I think I will have officially won the bet. So, <laughs> yeah, I think so. You got Texas A&M Commerce. You got you're at Nichols. Nichols not as good as I thought they would be. So, that, I mean, I, I feel like the, the five of the last six games are are very winnable for the Cowboys. Um, Southeastern is the only one I could see them obviously losing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Southeastern right now, I think, it's, is now the favorite after they beat Incarnate Word. But, yeah, man, that Alcorn game, that was, uh, that, that was the, the, you know, the game where McNeese, you know, I think they, they should have won that game. And, um, or they could have won that game. I'm not saying they should have because they just didn't play very well, but uh, they could have won that game. They could be sitting at two and three right now, which is where I would have I had predicted them to be. And you never know what happened after that. But if they lose one more game, um, that under six and a half, I think will officially uh, cash for 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 your boy PAC here. So um, <laughs> I'll do you like so, that yeah. dude on Twitter. Do what? I said I'll do you like that dude on Twitter. Well, like I said, I won't be I won't be too upset because I didn't act well. I mean, I won't be. I ain't going to chase you down for it. It's 20 bucks. You know, hey, it is what no, it is. No, I'm not going to do you like that. Well, a I man appreciate that. You're a real stand-up only, guy over there, Ryan. Hey, a man is only as good as his word. You're right. What's that guy's name again? Jeff Nadu. Yeah, F that guy. Like I said, he still got me a winner a couple of weekends ago, so I need to see if he can, can give me another winner this weekend. I didn't, I didn't follow his bet this past weekend. I was so busy last week, I didn't even get a chance to see what his blog bet was, but I might look this week and see, cause I need, I need some plays this weekend. I'm going to hang out at the sports book Saturday. So I need something to keep me busy all day long. Which one are you going to? Going to uh, the golden nugget draft King sports book. Uh-oh. Is that the one with the $500 chairs? No, that's LaBerge. Oh, okay. That's the bar stool. It's cheaper. This one's cheaper. Yeah. That's the bar stool sports book with the $500 mm-hmm. chairs. Oh, so let me put this together. Guy from Barstool stiffs you 50 bucks. Barstool. No, he was, no, he Barstool. wasn't. I mean, he's at Barstool now. He wasn't te- technically wasn't at Barstool when he stiffed me, but he's, a, he's there now. Yeah. Barstool Sportsbook, $500 recliner chairs. Uh, that's, you know, th- those we two, those two things today. don't correlate with, well, those two things don't correlate with one another. And yeah, I don't even do know if that was a, they're both screw jobs. 
Yeah, I mean, but they have no like correlation with one another. You know, they're 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 similar and they're both screw jobs, but like nonetheless, and I don't even know if the five hundred dollar, you know, payment to sit in those chairs is a bar stool thing or it could be a LaBerge thing or a pin thing. I don't know. Well, if it's in the bar stool sports book, I think El Presidente needs to know about what's going on in his sports book. Yeah, well, well, that's technically, Penn Pen owns Barstool now. So that is, oh, that's true. Because so he probably doesn't have any say. Dave's only got say. Yeah, Dave probably has zero say as to how much they charge for, for what, you know, to sit in those chairs. Like Dave right now, I think, is pretty much just like the director of the content of Barstool Sports. Like he's, he works for Penn pretty much, I think, technically. So what's going on in the Southland? We got some good games with some good betting lines. Um, uh, well, not really. There's only three games involving um, Southland Conference teams this week. Northwestern State is uh, traveling up north to Eastern Illinois. This, based on the lines, this could be the closest game of I- involving any Southland Conference team. Northwestern State, ten and a half point underdog at Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois, um, obviously. They're going to be in Lake Charles on November the 5th, taking on McNeese uh, as the McNeese has that uh, deal with it's the Ohio Valley. I think that yeah, yeah. the Ohio Valley conference there. Uh, I'm, let me look at their schedule real quick. Eastern Illinois, because I feel like let's see. Trash. They, I'm looking at their schedule here real quick. If I can find it. While you're looking for that, help support our show by purchasing C4 Energy testosterone products and pre-workout products. All you got to do is use our shortened affiliate link, www.tinyurl.com slash shop C4 Energy. Yeah, so so right now, Eastern Illinois, they're one in three. Um, They're a 10 and a half point favorite, though, at home against Northwestern State. I mean, who's they actually not? just got their first win. North uh, Eastern Illinois did uh, at Murray State last week, so uh, they won thirty-five to twenty-one. They've actually played. They played Chattanooga, who was ranked number ten, I think, at the time. I don't know if they're still ranked or not. They played Illinois State, Northern Illinois. They played some of these games close, though. They played Chattanooga. Well, never mind. It was an eighteen-point game, but they played Northern Illinois to a touchdown. So, um, be curious to see. And then, of course, they played McNeese later. And they play Northwestern State. So they do have two Southland Conference schools on their schedule right now. But uh, they are one and three. Uh, they're hosting Northwestern State minus 10 and a half over unders at 56 and a half for that game. Um, Lamar is traveling over to Incarnate Word, where the Cardinals are, well, the Incarnate Word Cardinals, that is. We got the Battle of the Cardinals here. Incarnate Word is a 27 and a half point favorite over under his 67 in that ball game. And then Texas A&M Commerce, McNeese's next opponent. Uh, we'll get to learn a lot more about Texas A&M Commerce as they're going to travel to Hammond and take on southeastern Louisiana where the Lions are. Well, it's a, here's another thing, too. It's a battle of the Lions. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Texas A&M Commerce taking on southeastern Louisiana, both of the Lions. we got Lamar and Incarnate Word. Both are the, uh, the Cardinals. So... Got a lot of nicknames uh, matching up here in the Southland this week. But Texas A&M Commerce, a 24-and-a-half-point underdog at Southeastern Louisiana with an over-under set at, uh, at 59 there. So those two games not expected to really be close, I guess, according to Vegas. And uh, Northwestern State, I don't know. They might they might be able to hang in with Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois is not – they don't have that great of a, a, a record right now, but they do have a, you know, their their strength of schedule is kind of up there. So they've been battle tested. So uh, we'll see. Should be interesting up in uh, in Illinois this weekend when Northwestern State heads up there. Weather might be pretty nice there as well. Much cooler, I expect. I'm thinking I'm feeling a certain way here. Follow me on this rationalization. So Texas a and Commerce earlier this year played Tennessee Tech, a trash-ass team from the Ohio Valley Conference. Northwestern plays Eastern Illinois, a trash ass team from the Ohio Valley Conference. McNeese plays Eastern Illinois, a trash ass team from the Ohio Valley Conference. Now let's put this together. We got a brand new team that just came up from Division Two from the Southland. 
We got Northwestern, who is equally trash ass. Does the Southland Conference think McNeese is trash ass? Is that <laughs> what's going on here? Because I feel disrespected. Are they only putting their good teams against the quote unquote good teams of the Southland? Like we can't play one of their better teams like Lindenwood or Southeast Missouri State? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, obviously the last few years, McNeese has been subpar. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know who makes that schedule and whatnot, but um, I don't know if Eastern Illinois was expected to be this bad because, like I said, they played a tough schedule so far. I mean, they might turn it around and be one of the better teams in the Ohio, in the Ohio Valley Conference. I mean, like I said, they, you know, they're coming off a win here. Actually, yeah, they're one and zero in the Ohio in the Ohio Valley Conference right now. So, and uh, Lindenwood's actually it doesn't look like Lindenwood's actually an Ohio Valley team, I guess. But um, yeah, they they're one and zero in the Ohio Valley. They beat Murray State already, so we'll see how they fare in the in the Ohio in the Ohio Valley Conference. But um, like I said, non district schedule, I mean non conference schedule has been a little tough. This might be the easiest team they play in the non-conference schedule, to be honest with you, with Northwestern State this weekend. So, And they're a 10-point favorite. So, like I said, Eastern Illinois might be a decent squad, and we're going we're, you know, to get a chance to see them personally here on November 5th when they come to Lake Charles. I just feel disrespected. All right, let's go ahead and move over to FBS. Or you want some more? F- I got some more FCS lines. Oh, yeah, let's do that, Patrick. Keep us on the South- road here. South Dakota is traveling to South Dakota State. Mm. South Dakota State, number two in the country, is a minus 12 at home, over under 43 and a half. That's also somewhat low as well. I would lean the over right there. Also, I'd lean the minus 12. I feel like South Dakota State, like at home against South Dakota, of course, it's probably a rivalry game if I had to guess, so it could be a little closer. But the over under seems a little bit low. I don't know what the weather is going to be like. Let me see. Let me look up the weather real quick. The weather could play uh, in, see, in Brookings, South Dakota. I need that weather. There we go. I need that weather for this weekend. Saturday, actually, it's going to be a beautiful day. It's actually going to be a perfect day for football. High of 63 degrees and sunny skies on uh, on Saturday. So a little windy, wind 13 miles per hour, but... I'd lean South Dakota State, I guess, with the minus 12. I know it might be a rivalry game, but South Dakota State, just too good. Uh, I heard top- the weather in South Dakota is nuts. I was talking to a guy that worked like on an old place over there, mm-hmm. and he said there's hardly any trees in South Dakota, so the wind, oh, it, not, nothing stops the wind. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. And, and he said That's it's why always- it's probably, I mean, the, the wind, let's see. He said the wind is always hella gusting. I mean, yeah, like on a windy day, like you're really going to feel it. But like even on a a slight day, you'll, you know, five mile, you'll feel a five mile per hour wind a lot better, you know, when there's no trees, nothing blocking it. I mean, you'll feel it. It might not be a big wind, but you'll feel it. You know, you'll feel its presence, I guess you can say, I'm sure. He said Um, in the wintertime, they can only work 10 minutes at a time outside. So, the guy comes back in who's almost dead from frostbite, hypothermia. He tells you where he left off. So you got 10 minutes to go out there and do what you got to do. Then you come back and you tell another guy where you left off and he goes and tries to do whatever he can do. And it's like a, it's like a cycle. Yeah. Nuts. Well, this Saturday, um, like I said, sunny skies with a high of 63. I mean, that's about as perfect as it gets uh, mm-hmm. for football weather as far as I'm concerned. So weather should not be a factor in this game. A top 20 matchup in the FCS, Southern Illinois ranked 17th right now, traveling over to Missouri State, which is ranked number 20th right now. And um, two-and-a-half-point favorite is Missouri State there. Over-under is at 61. Uh, they got they got a few top twenty five matchups this weekend in FCS. As a matter of fact, another one, Delaware, number six in the country, traveling to William and Mary, who's ranked sixteenth right now. And William and Mary is actually favored by a field goal what? at home. There, I would lean Delaware 
uh, and and plus three. If you can get it at plus three and a half, I would I would, I would smash Delaware. The over under there is also at forty three and a half. Low scoring game expected there. Abilene Christian at Stephen F. Austin. Abilene Christian's actually I think four and one right now, and uh, Stephen F. Austin is a one and a half point favorite at home. Uh, Abilene Christian, like I said, four and one. I don't know who they've played though. Let me look real quick. I can look. Luckily, I got Google here right in front of me. Probably some whack Abilene. teams from the whack. Luckily, I, I don't know Dixie if I can Abilene correctly here. Yeah. So, well, yeah, they played like Utah Tech. Like, who the fuck yeah. is Utah Tech? Like, exactly. Um, Utah Tech, Prairie View A and M. Don't their only loss. It's to Missouri, though, so that's obviously an SEC team there who almost beat Georgia this week, by the way. So they played Lamar. They won. They played Prairie View A&M. They won. They played Western New Mexico. They won. And they played Utah Tech this past week. So, like, no huge quality wins there. I mean, Stephen F. Austin might be the – if they can get a win against Stephen F. Austin, that might be, you know, the biggest – quality win they could have. I mean, they're, they're two and three right now though. So, um, but they beat Alcorn state. So there you have that. And then they lost by a point last to Sam Houston. Um, so yeah, that's going to be an interesting game there. And then the other top 25 matchup is a uh, Eastern Washington number 24. They, they, they're the ones with the red turf. Um, and they, they've usually been a perennial power in FCS, they're traveling to Weber State, and Weber State is actually a 14-and-a-half point favorite at home. Uh, I think Weber State's still undefeated. The over-under there is 62-and-a-half. The over-under for Stephen F. Austin and Abilene Christian, too, by the way, over-under is at 50 for that game. That's yeah, that's average, I guess. Maybe a little, still a little bit on the low side. But Eastern Washington at Weber State, over-under there at 62-and-a-half, so that's a little higher. But, um. You know, the perennial power that Eastern Washington typically is, I know it's on the road, but a 14 and a half is a lot of points between two top 25 teams in the FCS. Uh, so I would maybe lean Eastern Washington there, but I still don't know enough to actually put money down on it. But um, yeah, that's the FCS lines that that I have for, for this weekend. So a few, go, a few good games in the FCS division th- this coming weekend. I remember back in the mid 2000s sometime, McNeese was undefeated. Eastern Washington came in first round. I mean, the stadium was freaking lit, dude. Standing room only, people on the grass. It was amazing. And then they came in and just steamrolled our ass. Yeah. Oh, by the way, speaking of Abilene Christian, uh, two weeks ago, they played Warner, Florida. I remember this now because I see it in front of me, but. Um, I don't know if you saw the final. Did you see the final score of uh, Ab? No, I'm sorry, Stephen F. Austin, not not Abilene Christian. Stephen F. Austin. Um, they played Warner, Florida, which Warner, Florida must be a Division two team or something. So they won this game by a final score of ninety eight to nothing. That's crazy. Yeah. So if you had minus ninety seven, you you. Uh, <laughs> There was people. People were making jokes on social media. It's like, damn, I had a uh, Warner plus ninety seven, and I lost and shit like that. So, uh, but Stephen F. Austin, you know, they couldn't follow up that ninety eight point performance this past week. Uh, they lost seventeen to sixteen against Sam Houston State. Uh, so, so there's that. But yeah, those are the FCS lines here. Uh, you got any more thoughts on the FCS for? For this week, what was that Warner team? Were they like a like Division three team or something? I don't know. Let me see. I can maybe look it up here. Warner University Athletics. Let me let me look it up real quick. It's a new university that Kurt Warner made. <laughs> maybe it's, it's fake, like the the Bishop. Uh, what was that fake high school team that were playing all these like really good high school football teams? Yeah. Bishop Sycamore or whatever. Uh, let's see. Warner University. Let's see. Not even coming up. Come up on Wikipedia. No, it's coming up. It's just oh. there's conflicting. Okay, here we go. Nobody knows. All right. They They're are. Online University. 
It, on, on Wikipedia, it says their association is the NAIA. So, I thought um, NCAA teams couldn't play NAIA teams. Well, I, 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 so I, that's what I'm, you know, like I said, there's conflicting reports. I'm trying to huh. figure out what the truth is here, but, uh, um, and it might just be in football. Oh, okay. I love NAIA. So, this is what it football. says right here the, the Warner Athletic team are called the Royals. The university is a member of the NAIA, primarily competing in the Sun Conference. Uh, at, until after the 07 08 school year for most sports since the 1990 91 academic year. While its men's volleyball team competes in the Mid South Conference, they are also a member of the National Christian College Athletic Association, the NCAA, primarily competing as an independent in the South region of the Division I level. So, like, I'm not sure what all that means, but it seems like NAIA is, is what it's at. So. Well, if so, they're yeah. a Christian college, then they'll probably be playing McNeese basketball here next season. They might. Uh, they like to play those Christian colleges. Yeah, they might. I don't know. They came out with the schedule. I don't remember seeing Warner, but then again, no. I didn't. none of those names stuck with me. So, All right, yeah, let's get to some FBS, the big boys. Yeah, all right. So, um, obviously, this weekend, it's the, uh, the Red River Showdown or the Red River Shootout, whatever you want to call it. Um, Oklahoma, man, they all of a sudden are just absolutely garbage. Lost to Kansas State, got embarrassed by TCU this past week. Um, Illegal they, hit on the quarterback. Yeah. Knocked him out of the game. Yeah. But the, by that point, it was already, I think it was already out of hand at that point. Yeah. But uh, Oklahoma or well, Texas, a seven-point favorite. They're a whole touchdown favorite against Oklahoma. I know quarterback Quinn Ewers, I think he's trying to practice this week. He's trying to play. If he plays. All right. But then again, I don't know. You know, this is a rivalry game where, it, honestly, it doesn't even matter what the records or anything are. But seven points, I mean, that's right on that line where it's like, I don't even know if I want to touch it. The over-under is at 65. That's another – it just – that's based on what I know about these two teams. That's just tough to go one way or the other. I want to see if that line moves at all. Um, Tennessee is at LSU. Tennessee, a three-point favorite against the Tigers. Over-unders at 64. This is one, honestly, as an LSU fan, I would I would lean Tennessee here. Um, you know, I think LSU, while they've been playing well, um, this will be the toughest team they've played so far this year, by far. And um, I don't know. I think LSU still just has a lot of work to do especially on the offensive side of the ball, that offensive line still needs work. Um, they still got to kind of get it, you know, really get a spark going on offense if they want to keep up with Tennessee because Tennessee's offense is just a well-oiled machine at this point. I would lean Tennessee, but I, I'm an LSU fan, and I'm never betting against my Tigers. So if I wasn't an LSU fan, I would I would, I'd bet Tennessee, I'll be honest with you. Um, TCU at can What? Did you see the pictures of the jerseys that Tennessee is going to be wearing? Yeah, they're wearing like the gray jerseys or something like yeah, that. Yeah, those look fire, man. Yeah, that's another reason too why I think I'd bet Tennessee their jerseys game is <laughs> going to be on point. Um, so game day will be at Kansas, TCU at Kansas, TCU minus seven. This is two. These are two teams that have covered the spread in every game they've played so far. They're both undefeated. Something's got to give here. TCU on the road, seven point favorite here. I really don't know what to do with this. I mean. You know, you, you 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 tell me to bet Kansas, but like, obviously, you know, like I said, both of these schools, both of these teams, are both four and zero oh, or five and zero oh now against the spread this year, and so like like I said, something's got to give here. Um, I really don't know. This is it's a tough one. I would like to think Kansas at home. With game day there, the excitement and all that stuff of being five and zero for the first time in thirteen years, that they would keep it within seven. If I get seven and a hook, maybe I'll take Kansas. There might be seven and a hook somewhere out there, but I would maybe take Kansas. But then again, I I really don't know. I mean, TCU looked so good last week. I know Kansas has been looking good as well, but that that's another tough one. Like I don't know which way to go on that one. So uh, you know I wouldn't what? touch it. I wouldn't touch it yet, but. Go I think ahead. the past has already shown you what you need to do because just like the old saying goes, those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Kansas has already shown you not, not to bet against them. 
Yeah, you're right. But um, also, I think, well, I was about to say, this might be the toughest team they've faced so far, at least on paper, because TCU's 5-0. and oh. I mean, and, and Grand Oklahoma on paper was really good. But, well, no, Kansas hasn't played T, uh, Oklahoma yet. But So, yeah, this might be the toughest game Kansas has had so far this year with TCU. I mean, TCU went on the road at Colorado and got me some money early on in the season. TCU's been rolling. Their quarterback, I don't even know if Duggan's still the quarterback because I know they had that Morris kid in there. But at one point, Duggan was like, had a really good QB rating and things like that. They've just been playing well. But like I said, Kansas has been playing well as well. Uh, Jalen Daniels, their quarterback's been playing well. I, I, I really want to make a play on this game just because it's the game day game and it's going to be a lot of eyes on that game. They're also playing the same. They're also playing the same time as the Red River Shootout and Tennessee at LSU. But luckily, I'll be at the sports book. There'll be plenty of TVs. Hopefully, I can catch that one. Um, Utah at UCLA. UCLA is still undefeated, by the way. Um, no one's really been talking about UCLA. Um, but Utah is at UCLA. Utah is actually a four and a half point favorite here. I'm still very high on Utah, even though they they screwed me in week one against Florida, but I'm still very high on the Utes uh, at UCLA four and a half points. That's an, that's another tough one, man. Like they are Vegas got me over here sweating. Like, what am I going to do this week? You know? Um, but in the over unders at 65, I would maybe lean the under here. I don't know if both of these teams can really get up there and score that many points. I mean, I know Utah's defense is pretty good. Uh, and then at home, you know, I don't know how good Utah's offense is going to play on the road. Um, UCLA at times has, you know, been hit or miss on offense and defense. So that's the thing. I don't know. Like, that's going to be tough. North Carolina at Miami. Miami's been in, you know, they lost to A&M, and then, then they go to lose to at, to Middle Tennessee, uh, I think, last week. And uh, North Carolina's been playing well. The, even though they just lost to Notre Dame, but their quarterback Drake May's been playing well. It's at Miami. Miami is a three and a half to a four and a half point underdog or favorite. Excuse me. Um, my my initial thought was, you know, especially after the the loss last week, North Carolina, maybe they bounce back uh, and and knock off Miami because Miami. But of course, Miami got the loss last week too. So these are two teams I think coming off of losses that um, are looking to bounce back here. So I can't read this game one way or the other. I feel like North Carolina could be the better team, at least have the better offense here. So um, we'll see. It depends on where that spread moves. Over-unders at 66 for that one. BYU is taking on Notre Dame. This game will be in Las Vegas. Notre Dame coming off the big win against North Carolina this past week. Uh, BYU... I remember who they played last week. I can't remember, but BYU, uh, they lost to Oregon a couple of weeks ago after the big win against Baylor the week before at home. This is a neutral site game. You know, this one's tough because I, I thought no, I, I just didn't think Notre Dame was going to be that good this season. They really, for the most part, haven't been that good. BYU's been good for the most part, with the exception of the Oregon game. But I felt like that was, you know, that was just Oregon's game right there. That that, that was just their time to to shine that day. And this is another tough one. Notre Dame, three and a half point favorite. Over under is at 52 right here. Three and a half points. Like I said, this is a really tough week. I can't figure this week out yet. I'm, I'm, it's going to be a long week trying to figure these out. Notre Dame, three and a half point favorite. I don't have a lean there just yet. South Carolina at Kentucky. Kentucky at 10 point favorite. Over under at 49 and a half. I would lean the over right there. I think Kentucky can score some points. South Carolina on the road is not that great, but I think they, um, if if they get behind early, I think they'll start airing it out and they may score some points there. I think 49 and a half is a bit low, but I would like to think Kentucky and South Carolina, um, two good quarterbacks too. You got Spencer Rattler on one side and then you got Will Levis on the other side. Kentucky also coming off the loss at Ole Miss. I think Kentucky, this is a bounce-back spot for Kentucky. I would lean the spread, Kentucky minus 10 at home against South Carolina because, like I said, South Carolina on the road, not nearly as good as they are if this was at South Carolina. So I would lean Kentucky here. Florida State at NC State. 
both of these teams coming off uh, big games last week with, well, that, with, that they lost. Florida State taking their first loss of the year against Wake Forest. NC State losing to Clemson. Uh, this is a game I really don't know because coming into the season, I would have suspected NC State to be the better team. They're favorite by three at home. Uh, this is a tough one because Florida State has has played pretty well uh, this year. They they got down big. I say big. They they fell into a hole last week uh, against Wake Forest, and they sort of dug their way back out of it. But ultimately, uh, Wake Forest pulled away at the end there. I'm not really sure where to go here. Uh, this is going to be another tough one. Uh, Texas A&M at Alabama. This spread has just gotten crazy. Uh, Alabama 24 point favorite against Texas A&M coming into the year. If someone would have said what's going to be the game of the year, this was this was going to be it because of obviously of the the storyline with uh, Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher kind of going at each other back in May. But obviously Texas A&M has seen better days. Uh, it's at Alabama. You get the revenge factor from the game last year where A&M won. Is Alabama going to beat them by 24? <sighs> That's a lot of points. That's I would like to think they might, but that's too many points for me to give a lean one way or the other. Over under 51, I'd probably take the over because I think Alabama will score some points. Uh, can Texas A&M score some points here? I don't know, but Texas A&M's defense is also pretty decent as well. I'll be curious to see if they can halt Alabama. Also, Bryce Young, too. He got hurt last week, so I don't even know what Bryce Young's status is. But uh, I'm looking at a boy. Look, I look up Google, type in Bryce Young. And um, yeah, right now it says he's day to day. That was yesterday. So we don't know if he's going to play yet or not. Um, I don't know if that's going to affect the line at all or not, but we'll see. And then the final FBS game I have is Oregon State at Stanford. Oregon State has been, for the most part, playing pretty well this year. I mean, I didn't think Oregon State was as good as they were. In, in football this year. I mean, they got their ass kicked by Utah last week. But now a chance to play a, a bad Stanford team, in my opinion. Um, right now, Oregon State is a seven-point favorite on the road at Stanford. Let's see if I can look up Stanford's schedule here real quick because I want to see what they've done at home this season. So they played Colgate at home, won by 31. They played USC at home and lost. Went on the road at Washington and lost, and then they lost to Oregon. So they're one and three right now. It looks like with three of those losses coming to you know pretty good Pac-12 teams. So I would lean Oregon State here. My gut tells me to lean Oregon State minus seven. I think Oregon State is a team that is just they're three and two. Um, they've played. They beat Boise State. They beat Fresno State. They beat Montana State. Uh, they lost to USC by three points, and then they kind of got whooped at Utah last week, which Utah is a tough place to play. Stanford is not as tough of a place to play. Uh, coming off the big loss at Utah last week, I think Oregon State could bounce back. I would lean the Beavers and minus seven. If it goes under seven, if you can get it at six or six and a half, I would definitely take the, uh, the Beavers there. Uh, or I, I would definitely lean that for sure. But right now at seven, I'm a little bit hesitant, more hesitant than I would be. But I'll still lean the Beavers right there, and that's all the FBS lines I got. All right, you got a long shot, a dog out there that you think may be able to pull up the upset. A long shot this week. Uh, just looking on, I, I had I think I did I had Wake Forest as my long shot last week, and they won. So, um, I mean, obviously Kansas has a plus seven. At home, game days there. I'll, I'll, I'll look. I'll, 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 I'll fly with you there. I'll, uh, hey. I'll say the Jayhawks is my long shot. You know, I'll, uh, I'll throw that out there. Um, just based, like I said, off the fact that they have game day, they're riding a big high. Um, they're at home, all the excitement. Like it's going to be a packed house in, in in Lawrence. It's an early kick. I would, like I said, long shot. I'd take the Jayhawks. What about a sure shot? A sure shot. One that comes to my mind, Alabama. Yeah, but like I said, I don't know if they can cover the 24 or not. But 
I mean, if you if you think Alabama's going to win, yeah, that that is that is for sure. I will put everything. I'll, I'll throw that. In, I'll throw that money line in a parlay real real quick. Um, maybe a sure shot. Shit, I maybe Texas. Um, but then again, like I said, I don't know because you know, in this rivalry, you know. The better the better team doesn't always win these games in this rivalry. That's what makes it such a great rivalry is that a team like Oklahoma who just lost two in a row and got embarrassed last week could play the game of their life and beat Texas. And then last year, but of course last year the way the game uh, unfolded last year, Texas was was up big on Oklahoma and Oklahoma came back and won that game. I would like to think the revenge factor for Texas and if Quinn Ewers is healthy, I if Quinn Ewers is healthy. If he starts and he's healthy and does not get hurt, I, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and say Texas minus seven against uh, against the Sooners. So, um, well, even if he's not that quarter, that second string quarterback is way better than the second string quarterback from Oklahoma because if Gabriel doesn't make it back, true, yeah, if Gabriel that other not, guy is bad. Yeah, so I would, I guess, I, I guess I'll go with the Longhorns here, especially after, especially in the revenge game from from a year ago. Because I picked Texas in that game a year ago in my pick them, and I was like, oh, we got this. And then, dude, talk about a, a choke job uh, of a lifetime Texas had last year in the Red River Showdown. So I don't think they want to repeat that. I'll take Texas as my sure shot. The betting on the Bayou show is for entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be professional betting advice. If you lose your ass at a sports book, betting on the Bayou cannot be held responsible. Gambling problem? Call 1-877-770-STOP. All right, Patrick. So you let us know earlier on that, hey, you're waiting until you know, the end of the week to start doing your picks. Where, where can people follow you to get those picks? Well, you can follow the betting on the Bayou Twitter account at B O T B media. You can also follow my personal Twitter. If you want, it's at that boy, Pat. And I do post my plays there on Saturday mornings as well. On the B O T B media, I post, I I'll post them as I do it, as I bet. So like, if you want to get the picks earlier, follow B O T B media. But if you just want to follow me along on, on Saturdays, um, follow me on my personal account at that boy Pat because that's where I'll tweet uh, out my picks for Saturday morning, and then I'll uh, as the day goes on, I'll just put if I won or lost, then just keep just to keep track of my plays. Very cool. Have fun at the sports book. Have you already started looking at their menu to plan that out to see what you're going to get and eat while you're there? Well, I'm definitely going to get some wings for sure. Yeah. So that's that's all we – I've actually had their wings before, and they're they're really good. So, yeah, I'm going to get the wings again. Yeah, any certain brew you're going to partake in while you're there? No, I do need to look at that. I need to look at that menu to see what kind of uh, beer they got. Um, I guess we're going to do a little day drinking on Saturday um, and watch some football. So, um, yeah, I need to look at the menu and see what they got. Something on tap, though. Got to go with the whatever's on tap. I wonder if they have any of those beers that you like from New Orleans. You think? Uh, I mean, they might. Like I said, I gotta look at the, I gotta look at the menu. Um, I wish they had the Holly Beach beer. That'd be great. That was <laughs> that's, that's that's some good beer right there. I tell you what, that's really good beer. That Holly Beach beer. Nothing beats a good cold Holly Beach beer from Parish Brewing. And what sucks is they only sell it uh, seasonally. I think so. Mm. That sucks. All right. Well, that's gonna do us for today. Remember, follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, B-O-T-B Media. It's the same for both. Also, if you like the show and you want to help us out, you can use our affiliate link to get you some C4 energy drinks, some testosterone products. Look, we're all getting old. Not Patrick, maybe not so much, but myself. I mean, I'm, I'm, getting, the, hey, look, I'm, I'm not getting any younger, dude. So, <laughs> Yeah, I'm in the mid-50s. I'm not mid-50s, mid-40s. Uh, so, look, you start losing that testosterone. It's just a fact of life. You can replace it with a six alpha over at C4 energy products. And if you're looking for pre-workout to go get yourself ready to hit the gym, you can get it all there at one place and you can use our affiliate link so that your boys get the proper, uh, you know, commission for the sale. Triple W tiny URL.com slash shop C4 energy. All right, Patrick, we'll do it next week, brother. Sounds good, man. See you then.